Hey Zach, so what's up? Why are we meeting here at a racetrack? Well, I thought it'd be appropriate to meet here at a racetrack because we got a call from RoboRace. They'd like us to make some videos about RoboRace. What's RoboRace? Exactly. Robo Race is really exciting to me because it's everything we talk about on this channel, right? It's fully electric cars, driven autonomously, and now they're developing technology even as we speak. I mean, I remember seeing this up at the Formula E event up in Montreal, mm -hmm. and I mean, so it's fully autonomous electric cars racing around a racetrack at high speeds mm -hmm. with no driver. That's right, Robo Race is the world's first racing competition for both human and AI teams. Right now, Robo Race is running their first racing season called Season Alpha, in which teams of humans are programming cars called DevBot 2.0 to race against each other without a human driver. So each team is gonna get a similar car? Yeah, that's right. Each team gets the same stock DevBot 2.0 electric car to program. That way it's fair for everyone. But now it looks like a human driver can fit inside the DevBot 2.0. Very observant. Yeah, towards the end of the season, as the teams have more fully developed their software, Human drivers will get introduced into the mix as well, which I think is going to be really fascinating. This is really cool. Robo Race is using sports and competition to drive innovation. Exactly. Big auto companies sponsor racing teams so that they can experiment with new technologies that eventually make it into their consumer cars. Well, this is no different. These new autonomous technologies are going to trickle down into cars that we'll be seeing on city streets and highways before long. So how fast do these cars go? Well, let's see. Wait, that didn't look like a dev bot. Yeah, it is a little confusing. What we just saw is the robo car with a top speed of 300 kilometers an hour or 187 miles an hour. Obviously, there's no cockpit for a human driver in this car. The two cars, the dev bot and the robo car, use the same motors, which are two 135 kilowatt rear motors. The suspension, the gearbox, the inverters, they're all the same, but the chassis and the bodywork are obviously very different. Also, they use different battery packs. Yeah, but why two different cars? Well, Season Alpha will be using the DevBot 2.0. DevBot 2.0 runs on NVIDIA's Drive platform when in autonomous mode, and because it can be driven either by a human driver or autonomously, RoboRace can explore the relationship between man and machine for assisted and automated technologies, and by using DevBot 2.0, the human drivers can provide important performance information for the teams to help speed up the development of the software. What is this Season Alpha? I don't, I don't get it. Okay, so RoboRace is experimenting with these different formats, uh, kind of like, like alpha software, trying out different race types to see what is most exciting for fans and then to develop software for those race types. There'll be two teams starting this season, autonomous commercial vehicle developer team Arrival and the Technical University of Munich, or TUM. More teams are expected to join as the season progresses and races will take place in Italy, the UK, Hungary, and Las Vegas. But what comes after season alpha? Season Beta kicks off in 2020 with more teams and increasingly groundbreaking race formats and challenges around the world. Then in 2021, the first full official Robo Race season will begin with everything learned from Season Alpha and Beta. So it sounds like Robo Race is growing a lot. Do they need more people to take part? Actually, they do. Robo Race posts job opportunities on their website at roborace.com. I heard they might even be looking for drivers. Robo Race will be announcing any future opportunities on their social media. So I still have some questions. Like, do the cars all have the same AI? So no, uh, mechanically the cars are the same, but each team develops their own automated driving solution. So what kind of sensors do these cars use to see? So each car has four LIDARs for optical distance and measurement that cover an almost 360 degree field around the car. Then there's GPS, ultrasonics, radar, cameras, and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, or V2V. So each car knows where it is in relation to the other cars on the track. So in essence, very similar to a Tesla, except RoboRace adds LiDAR and V2V as well. We recently asked our Patreon patrons for questions about RoboRace, and here are a few of them. Terrence S. asks, so far it has not been available to watch live. Why not? I spoke with Johannes Beetz from the Technical University of Munich a project manager for one of the RoboRace teams, 
to find out the answers. Um, we are in Season Alpha. This is where we test uh, a few race formats, a few event formats. We have a lot of changes. We are in different places, which makes it a little bit difficult for us to make a live uh, view of the, of the races. And we have to figure out first, what is a good event format? What do the people want to see? And so we're still figuring out. Okay. Christopher D asks, being that there will be no lives at risk, this means less safety brackets, roll bars, and other onboard safety measures that weigh down the car. So these things can be removed, meaning that there'll be faster robo races, right? We don't need those safety issues for the driver. The safety things doesn't relate to getting faster or not. It relates to other things like the electrical power we need from the system. Mike B asks, Will RoboRace develop into a racing series that has cars that can corner even faster than F1 cars? And how can you guarantee that it won't be a dull race because every car knows the exact same path and optimum routes, which may result in trains? The first question was if it can be faster around the corner than a Formula One car. Um, this doesn't have to do something with an autonomous vehicle. This is just the vehicle itself, which means is it possible from a mechanical point of view and from an electrical engine point of view to go faster. This means if we are putting a Formula One tire on these vehicles, it will go faster around the corner. If we're giving it the same engine power than a Formula One car, it will go faster. Yes, it's possible to make it faster than a Formula One car, but it's not a problem of the autonomous driving systems. The second question uh, was if the cars will drive like, like a train after each other. Basically, it depends on what a team is capable of programming. We are trying to figure out the fastest route around the track. And this is what a Formula One driver does too. So basically, we will see the car driving the optimal race line. And then we will see if another car is going on the same line or not. So this is the first big difference, like two race drivers, if they can figure out the optimal race line. Even if one team does not find this out, it will not drive the faster route. And so the cars will not drive behind each other. There will be a gap. The second thing, and this is the important thing, and this is what we are seeing in Formula One, Formula E, in, in other racing series, is to integrate some factors that makes it more complicated to drive fast as we can like an energy limitation. If the car has no energy limitation, it can go fast as it wants and then we'll drive around the track. And the second thing is the tire wear. We need a, a stop of the vehicle. If this is integrated in this racing series, we will have a really interesting and a really nice race. More exciting than a Formula One race today. And Jeff R asks, we don't want to admit it, but some of us watch car racing in hopes of some fantastical pileup, but of course with no injuries. Could there be something along these lines in the plans with Robo Race? Not intentionally, of course, but it is a part of modern racing. Yes, definitely, because we want to go fast. In the Monte Blanco event, we drove up to 220 kph, which is really fast for a vehicle, but not as fast as like a Formula One car. They go even faster, like 320 kph, something like that. And if you go faster, we need quicker algorithms. And if we need Kluger algorithms, we need better hardware and we need more intelligent algorithms. And right now, in 2019, we don't have these algorithms so far. So this means if we want to have an exciting race, we want to have to drive faster, we need better algorithms, but we have to develop them before. And if we don't develop it, we will drive fast and then we will see accidents happen. The development of these algorithms, they need time and we have to figure out. The big difference is there is no human sitting inside who can figure out itself that there might be a problem with the vehicle or he cannot go faster, but we have to decide before. And there will be the day where we say, let's drive 300 kph per hour. We have figured out a lot, perhaps 90%, but the other 10% we have to see. And then we will see an accident happen again. Man, this is exciting. How can I follow RoboRace? Well, you can subscribe to RoboRace's YouTube channel, you can watch Robo Race's Instagram stories for race updates, and you can sign up here for updates. Now, we'll post these in the show notes below so that you can... Jesse? All that talk of Robo Race really made me want to drive my own Robo car! Race is 
own robo car? Go, go, yeah, yes, go, woo, yeah, racing, robo race, yeah. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.